So traditional forms of persuasion go something like this. To change someone's attitude and so their behaviour, we first have to give them a strong persuasive message that is possibly associated with some positive cues, such as an attractive or credible communicator. We see this in models such as Maguire's chain of persuasion. For a message to be effective, the person we're trying to persuade has to listen to it, they have to understand it, and then accept it before remembering it and translating it into behaviour. Brock's model of cognitive response analysis makes a similar point. According to this perspective, a persuasive message and the things that are associated with it are the focus of elaborative thoughts. Now, elaborative thoughts are essentially whether we think favourably or not about the message. It's those thoughts that lead to attitude change. This is similar to the elaboration likelihood model that we talked about in the attitudes topic. According to these dual process models, attitude change happens when we think about the message, at least under some conditions. Under others, it's also about shortcuts that suggest the message is correct or something that we should be persuaded by. There are other ways that we're influenced that don't rely on the persuasive message explicitly, and it's possible to influence people without them needing to engage in elaborative thought. It's even possible to persuade people to do something, even though they might not have a positive attitude about that behaviour at all. What we're talking about is called compliance, which means agreeing to a request from someone who does not have the authority to make you obey. How we can do that is described in a set of principles of compliance by Robert Cialdini. He identified six principles, reciprocation, consistency, social validation, liking, scarcity, and authority. Robert Cialdini is a social psychologist, and he decided that the best way to find out about persuasion techniques was to go undercover and infiltrate a number of different sales-related professions that rely on gaining compliance from people. He focused on salespeople, advertisers, real estate agents, negotiators, and even con artists. His thinking was that people working in these professions develop powerful persuasion techniques through a process of natural selection. He thought that because these compliance professionals depend on their ability to persuade others for their livelihood, those who use successful techniques will stay in business. The most adaptive compliance techniques will, over time, develop and persist in these compliance-based professions. So we're going to be talking about the strategies that you can use to maximise the chances of getting people to say yes. The reason most of these strategies work is because they make use of powerful social rules that govern our behaviour.